Hello and welcome to a reading podcast. I'm recording this from the park so you might hear some nice soothing nature sounds in the background. In today's episode I will be reading some paragraphs from the book called Batman and Philosophy, The Dark Knight of the Soul. So um, first the introduction. Riddle me this. We know what you're thinking because we're smart. We're philosophers. Batman and philosophy? Seriously? Why? Well, since you asked, because we believe that Batman is the most complex character ever to appear in comic books and graphic novels. Because the stories featuring him over the last 70 years, so not only in comics but also in the TV shows and in the movies and in the um, animated series, They provide us with a wealth of philosophical material to discuss. And because we had the chance, along with about 20 other fans, to combine our passion for the character with our love for philosophically, philosophical mumbling, all to create the book you now hold in your hands. No need to thank us, we're happy to do it. (laughs) One reason Batman appeals to so many people around the world is that he is just a human being. So I think that really does um, attract a lot of people because usually superheroes have these superpowers and they're, you know, sort of um, been gifted with these extraordinary powers that us mere mortals (laughs) aren't you know, equipped with. So we can't really relate to these superheroes. We put them on these pedestals. But I think the great appeal of Batman is because he is just a human being like us. Um, But he has all these gadgets and, you know, and stuff like that. Okay, so he is just a human being, even though he is nothing like the rest of us. So even though he is just a human being, he still is beyond our reach because there's something about him. Um, He has devoted his entire life to avenging the death of his parents and all other victims of crime by risking life and limb to to protect his city of Gotham and beyond. He has spent years and sacrificed everything to train his body and his mind to the point of perfection. He is wealthy beyond measure, but denies himself all luxuries, except a butler, in pursuit of a goal that will never be attained. And he does all this dressed like a giant bat. Well, that we can do, but what? But that's about it. Okay, so also I just want to say I apologize for any little mistakes I make because I'm recording this on the fly in in the park. I don't really get to edit much, so it's just gonna it's gonna be really free flowing, and I'm gonna make mistakes, but it'll be okay. And I'm sorry if there's like background noise. Okay, enough chit chat. What makes a person go to such extremes is what Batman does, good or right or victor- victorious. Vi- virtuous oh sorry virtuous okay so is what batman does good or right or virtuous and what does his obsession his devotion to the mission say about who he is how does he treat his partners his friends and his enemies what is it like to actually be batman these are all genuine philosophical questions. And when we read Batman stories, we can't help but think about this stuff and then write down our thoughts. So then the book talks about how the 20 chapters in this book explores issues of ethics, identity, friendship, politics, and much more. Okay, so now I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs from part one of the book, which is, Does the Dark Knight always do right. Chapter 1. Why doesn't Batman kill the Joker? Every time the Joker breaks out of Arkham Asylum, he commits depraved crimes, the type that philosophers call sick, triple sick even. Of course, Batman inevitably catches the Joker and puts him back through the revolving door at Arkham. Batman knows that the Joker will escape and that he will likely kill again unless the caped crusader can prevent it, which obviously he can't always do. So why doesn't Batman just kill the Joker? Think of all the lives it would save. 
Better yet, think about all the lives it would have saved had he done the deed years ago. Just among Batman's closest friends and partners, Commissioner Gordon has contemplated killing the Joker himself on several occasions, and Batman is usually the one to stop him. In a terif- in a terrifically revealing scene during the Hush storyline, Batman is this close to offing the Joker, and it is Jim who stops him. Batman asks Jim, how many more lives are we going to let him ruin? To which Jim replies, I don't care. I won't let him ruin yours. So basically what he's saying is that if he kills the Joker, he's going to be ruining his own life by committing murder, by committing a crime so that he will eventually get jailed. So, though he may have considered it on many occasions, Batman has never killed the Joker, decidedly his most homicidal enemy. Of course, with the exception of his very earliest cases, Batman has refused to kill at all, usually saying that if he kills, it would make him as bad as the criminals he has sworn to fight. But that seems almost selfish. Someone could very well say, hey, it's not about you, Bats. Or is it? Should it be? Usually, we think a person is obligated to do something that would benefit many people. But what if that something is committing murder? What is more important, doing good or not doing wrong? In this chapter, we'll consider the ethics of killing to prevent future killings, exactly the problem Batman faces when he balances his personal moral code against the countless lives that he could save. 